Hi guys, welcome back, and today I'll be doing a new what if, and this what if is what if Beerus woke up early. Now for this idea, I wanted to make sure that I don't go too crazy. However, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, because, well, it's a fun concept. So I'm going to get going. Oh, yeah, also, um, I know this has been done by other people. However, I'm going to try not use the same idea the others did, so there's your warning. And keep in mind, I haven't watched every What If YouTuber's variation of this, so I don't know how similar my things will go. I only really regularly watch Salad Saiyan and Plus Ultraman. I have watched some others, but I also don't watch all of their What Ifs, so if some things overlap, uh, yeah, uh, I apologise. Now, our story begins with the battle against Freezer. Goku having awakened the Super Saiyan form from his battle. Freezer's power is high, and so is Goku's. And all of these high powers throwing around catches the attention of a sleeping god, who is woken up by a high mortal power level. Now, of course, the power is nothing compared to Beerus. However, he's interested in the other power, which rivals, no, eclipses that of Freezer's. So, with his interest peaked, he asks Whis to pack up a bento box as they head towards Namek. With Whis and him arriving not long after the wish to revive everyone had been made, with Vegeta, just before being teleported away, seeing Beerus. This causes the Saiyan to flinch up, and is then taken to Earth, where he stays frozen in fear. But with the battle against Goku and Frieza, it still rages on. Beerus and Whis watch from a distance, up until the climax of the fight, up to the point where Goku gives Frieza energy and starts to fly away. Just before Freezer can throw his attack off, Beerus makes his presence known with Freezer freezing up at the sight of the god, while Goku watches on in confusion, the planet being mere moments away from exploding. Goku tells the pair that he doesn't know who they are and what they're doing here, but they need to get off the planet. However, when Freezer starts asking why Beerus is here, the god doesn't pay any attention to Freezer and just looks over towards Kakarot, with him saying, you are a Saiyan, but you offered the person who destroyed your planet and race a second chance. I must say, you aren't like any other Saiyan I have met. Goku is confused, with him not being able to sense the power of the people in front of him. He lets his guard down a bit. He asks who they are, and Whis and Beerus introduce himself. Beerus telling Goku how he is the god of destruction for this universe. This shakes Goku as King Kai shakes on his planet in fear. But the Saiyan realises that this is a chance to test his new power. Goku asks if Beerus would be interested in a fight. He would love to see how strong the God of Destruction is. Beerus smiles at this. With Beerus telling the Saiyan to come closer, Goku does so, and Whis proceeds to turn back time, giving the two fighters some more time to battle it out. Whis quickly taps Goku on the head with his staff, healing him and causing Goku to get a Zenkai. Quite a big one at that. Goku's excited and heads off a little bit away from Whis, getting ready to fight. Beerus, not expecting a lot, tells Goku to go all out, or at least try to entertain him. Goku takes fighting stance, with Beerus staying relaxed. The Saiyan goes all out, trying his best to defeat Beerus, or even land a blow after a while. But Beerus is easily able to dodge and block everything. Eventually, Beerus grows bored and quickly takes Goku down, with one quick chop to the neck. Goku's the best fight Beerus has ever had, and even though it wasn't too entertaining, you can see the Saiyan growing a lot. So he wants to keep him around. He tells Whis to wake the Saiyan up. Goku is woke up, rubbing the mark where he was hit, and realises he was taken down in one, and is amazed. He asks Beerus how he got so strong, but Beerus doesn't respond. He goes on to ask Goku a question, something he remembered during their fight. He wants to know what Goku knows about God Key. Goku knowing nothing, Beerus tells Goku this. Whenever you learn how to use God Key, or learn the Super Saiyan God form, then we will have our rematch. Frieza is still alive at this point. He just looks on in fear as he gathers up some energy, a much stronger blast than in canon. And seeing Goku's open, he throws a massive blast towards him. The Saiyan, seeing it, braces for impact, however Beerus easily knocks the blast away and tells Freezer he's a coward and a waste of potential. 
He Kakai's Beerus out of existence. Goku is shocked. He goes to ask more questions. When the planet begins to shake. On the brink of blowing up, Goku panics, saying that they really need to get out of here. Whis says that it's not a problem for them. He's the one who needs to leave. Goku hearing this says, Okay then, well, whenever I learn either of those things you told me about, you better be ready for a rematch, Lord Beerus. Beerus smirks as he and Whis leaves the planet, while Goku heads off doing the same as he did in canon, eventually arriving at Yardrap. Things here line up with canon, however Beerus stays awake throughout Goku's training on Yardrap, monitoring the Saiyan. Goku pushes himself a lot harder in this timeline, but after getting the instant transmission down, he heads home, where things go like canon. Beerus and Whis of course do learn about the time travel, but decide to ignore it for now, wanting to see what changes for Goku. Now, there are two major changes here. First off, we have a stronger Goku, thanks to him training harder and getting a Zenkai from Namek. Second, after hearing of God Ki and Super Saiyan God, he began to dig around a bit during the three years before the android attack. And with some help from King Kai, he does learn a tiny bit, but decides that it will be best to ask the Dragon Balls after dealing with the androids. Now, as for the androids, the android saga goes mostly like canon. Very small changes pop up, like Gohan and Piccolo being slightly stronger, and even Vegeta, who after seeing Beerus, has panicked and trained harder than ever. Of course, it's not enough to change the timeline up so things are different, but it's enough to bring up. Now, with not a lot changing, we get to the point where Goku and Gohan come out of the hyperbolic time chamber. Just after Goku had sized up Cell, he realises that he's still too weak and knows Gohan is the best bet. But Goku remembers something as he heads off to collect Dende. Now, while Goku's on Namek, he asks if he could use the Dragon Balls. They allow it, obviously, and Goku spends a few hours collecting them. And eventually, after gathering all the balls, with some help from Dende, he asks to learn three things. He has to learn everything Brunga knows about God Key, about a being known as Beerus, and something called the Super Saiyan God. Brunga is shocked to hear, but goes on to explain to Goku about God Key and the Super Saiyan God form, but doesn't share anything on Beerus. Much like Shenron, he is scared of the God. Goku's a bit upset to hear that he can't learn anything more. It's happy Prunga shared with him the two things Beerus told him to learn. With that done, Goku has learned how to do the ritual for the Super Saiyan God, and wonders if this will be the change in tide for the fight between himself and Cell. He thanks the Namekians for their help, and Goku takes Dende back to Earth to become the new Guardian. With him then going off and starting to collect the available Saiyans, Vegeta, Gohan, Trunks, and even Baby Trunks are grabbed, with Goku asking for their help, of course Gohan and Trunks are willing to help, and with a bit of playing around, Baby Trunks is easily able to be convinced. But Vegeta is where the problem lies. It takes some convincing, but after a few days of trying, he does agree to help. After a few days of trying, they finally convince Vegeta, and it's the morning of the tournament. The Saiyans only have a few hours before the tournament begins, so they need to make sure they use every moment they've got. With them all gathering around and starting to push all their energy into Goku, which like I said, Baby Trunks is the issue here, with a bit of convincing through play, he does offer up some energy. Goku's power begins to massively increase. However, Goku can tell this isn't what he was aiming for. It seems off. This doesn't feel like a power that could rival Beerus. Alongside that, he learns that everyone is still able to detect his key, and Goku knows that God Key isn't detectable by no God Key user. So Goku starts trying to figure out why it didn't work, wondering if it's because Vegeta's heart might not be pure. And after thinking on it for a few minutes, Gohan has an epiphany. Maybe they're one Saiyan short. Goku hearing this thinks it could be a possibility. Five Saiyans pushing their energy into one might be what they need. Everyone begins to panic. After all, they don't know of any other Saiyan who's pure, yet alone, alive. With them starting to think for a minute, they begin to panic even more as the tournament comes ever so closer. Vegeta, having been silent throughout all of this, and getting sick of waiting around, and wanting to see if this power works, brings up the fact he has a brother who might just fit the description. Everyone freaks out asking more questions, but Vegeta tells them to shut up and get the Saiyan as fast as they can. Goku agrees, heading towards King Kai and finding Tarbo. The small Saiyan would be shocked, but after hearing Goku is a friend of his brother, he offers to help. Goku brings Tarbo back to Earth, where him and Vegeta catch back up a little bit. 
However, after catching up with Vegeta, Torbal is filled in on the plan. Torbal is happy to help, so he joins the ritual. Time it's a lot easier. Torbal seems to be great with kids and manages to convince Baby Trunks to give up energy, making it seem like a game to the baby. And once that happens, everyone else gives Goku energy. This causes Goku to glow and float into the sky, which is when Goku's power completely disappears. But his aura becomes so intense. As he stops glowing, having slimmed down, aura changed colour and his hair now red. Goku at first doesn't feel the power difference and doesn't even notice what had happened to him. Goku getting it pointed out to him by Gohan is amazed and suddenly realises the power he feels. Future Trunks asks how he feels. Goku says he feels great. As Bulma hands Goku a mirror where he can see the physical differences. After getting used to this for a few seconds, Goku can feel that this power isn't permanent and he only has a short time in it. So they decide to head off to the tournament early. No one can keep up with Goku the moment he starts flying. The Saiyan is flying slow intentionally, but they soon lose sight of him. Eventually, they all arrive at the tournament grounds to see Goku and Cell staring each other down. Humans, Piccolo, 16, all soon arrive. Hercule is nowhere in sight, and everyone's confused, apart from the Saiyans. But after a quick explanation from Gohan, and explaining who Tarbal is, they are caught up. Cell's interested in this power of Goku showing off. Of course, his presence feels different, but his aura is undetectable, and Cell finds that interesting. He decides that the tournament will start a few hours early, and Goku agrees to fight, wanting to test out this new power of his. Goku takes a fighting stance, as Cell copies his movements. Goku moves, and immediately everyone loses sight of him. The Saiyan lands a punch on Cell's gut. Cell begins to wince in pain, and soon spits up 18. Goku is shocked, everyone's shocked, and Cell is screaming as he reverts to his semi-perfect form. Goku, seeing 18, realises what he did, and quickly gets her out of the arena, chucking her to Krillin. Cell, not really understanding what just happened, is panicking, trying to figure out what to do, trying to reason with Goku. I will give you an amazing fight. Just let me reach my perfect form once again. Goku listens, and for a moment, a brief moment, he wants to do it. But then remembering everything that happened with Frieza, and how he's lucky that Beerus stepped in, decides to not give Cell this second chance. He once again gut punches Cell, causing the bug to spit up 17. This time, Goku gets the android out of harm's way instantly. With Cell now angry, he starts to get ready to blow up. But Goku, having complete control of this fight, grabs hold of Cell, teleports to King Kai's planet, and thanks to being hundreds of times faster than he ever was, Goku grabs King Kai, Gregory, and Bubbles, then heads back to Earth. Cell explodes and kills no one. Goku tells King Kai that he'll bring back the planet in no time. They've got the Dragon Balls waiting. With everyone confused at what's going on, they all just look at Goku, who hadn't even worked with a sweat. Goku turns to everyone and says he wasn't really expecting it to be that simple. He asks how the androids are doing, as Krillin says that they're fine. Vegeta is annoyed at how easy Goku made that look. As he asks for a fight, Goku happily accepts, and the two spar for just a few seconds, and Vegeta realises the power difference. Vegeta demands that once this is all done, he gets the ritual done on him as well, and of course, the other Saiyans chime in, all except Tarbo, who is more than willing to help. Before anything can be done, Cell reappears in his super perfect state. Having learnt the instant transmission much like in canon, he reappears on Earth. He shoots off a beam, hoping to hit either Trunks or Gohan, wanting to strike one of the Saiyans and Earths. But Goku is too fast and easily deflects the attack. Cell is nervous. He hoped his super perfect power would be more than enough to deal with whatever this red-haired state was. But Goku shows him that he has no chance against him. No one is able to see Goku as he moves as fast as he can. Eventually, sending Cell flying into the air, and firing off a Kamehameha of proportions never thought to be possible before. Planets off in the distance see the attack, but luckily Goku doesn't cause any harm, only to Cell. Cell is completely evaporated as Goku lets out a sigh of relief. 
He then turns to everyone saying that they'll do all the god rituals after they've sorted everything else out. Things like King Kai's planet and reviving all those killed by Cell. Now, with this done, we'll end it here, just before the seven year skip. I hope everyone enjoyed this part. I really like the idea of this what if. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I'm not going to lie, this might have just been an excuse to use the new Dokkan renders. Um, but I'm not going to own up to that. Because, yeah, that would be childish, guys. But also, it's an excuse to play with Beerus. I'm not going to lie, Beerus is cool. And should have probably been dealt with a bit better in Super. That being said, I do like him. And my next What If uploaded will be... Um, I think in Kakarot raised by Raditz will probably be my next one probably should explain how my selective system goes with when I upload a new part I'll be honest it's mostly if I'm feeling creative for that what if in particular sometimes getting the creative juice going is really difficult for me I have mad writer's block a lot of the time and it's really annoying this is because if I'm not writing for this I'm writing other stuff so, I can tend to go a month or two without ever touching a what if. For my MCU stuff, that's some of the hardest stuff I write for. Because it's either the change is massive and I don't think it makes sense. Or the change is so minor I don't see any point. And it's trying to find the balance between them. Also, watching the MCU movie sometimes is really dull. Not that I hate them. I fucking love the MCU movies. But, um, yeah, I've just not really felt like it recently hence why not really being touched i yeah i'm just sort of rambling now yeah so i hope everyone enjoyed i hope you all have a good day or a great night and hopefully you like this part i'll see you next time guys